Hey, what's up guys? My name is James Augustine, and for those of you who don't know me, I am a 20-year-old executive chef and owner of two restaurants in San Diego, California. On this channel, I document the entire process of building and eventually opening and operating these two restaurants. Throughout the videos, I also explore my personal beliefs on life and the various psychological concepts that have shaped me into the person I am today. Now with the intro done, let's get into the video. I told him repeatedly that it was not going to fit and yesterday they got delivered and we actually had to cut a hole in this wall to get the hoods in. So dumb. Hey, what's up guys? This week is going to be a really big week. Some of the big things that are going on, firstly, the wall tiles are getting delivered, so we can start that process of tiling the walls. Um, this week, the floor tiles will be done, and the kitchen hoods for both of the restaurants are being delivered. Also, this is the first week that I'm gonna be integrating the journal feature, where I talk about a lot of the various psychological concepts that have shaped me into the person I am today. Each week I'll cover a different topic and throughout each of the days in the video, I will kind of add more information and apply to different areas of life. For the first concept, I wanted to pick something that is the most fundamental, the most basic ideas in psychology that has the most implications. This concept was actually the first concept I learned in psychology and it completely grabbed me and introduced me to the world of psychology. Most people are under the impression that there is only a conscious realm. There is only what they see and there's only what they do. And this week is gonna be all about breaking down the fact that there is two aspects of reality. There is a conscious aspect and there is also an unconscious aspect. And the best way for me to begin to describe that is actually with a personal story. And it's the story that actually kind of shows how I got into psychology in the first place. So about four years ago, I took a trip back to Dallas, my hometown, and I had a conversation with one of my friend's moms who happened to be a relational therapist. Now at the time, about four years ago, I was having some difficulty in my relationship and I couldn't really pinpoint what it was. It was just problematic. So I remember going to Dallas and I remember telling um, my friend's mom kind of the problems that I was experiencing. As soon as I finished describing the problems I was going through, she asked me a question that would end up changing my life and spark my interest into the profound world of psychology. She asked me where my thoughts were coming from. And I remember thinking like, what the hell does that mean? Where are my thoughts coming from? They're coming from me. And when we're at lunch, she began to describe that reality isn't as simple as you think. Obviously, there is conscious things people do, but there's also an unconscious side to reality. There's a side that you don't see. And more specifically, she began to explain how the mind contains different subpersonalities with different motivations. And that's something I'm going to be going into next week. But the important part here is that she began to introduce to me the idea that the mind had an unconscious realm. There was not just me acting in the present, there was also a me that was in the background, an unconscious aspect of me that affects my conscious decisions. Now, when she first told me that, it really shook me up because I thought about how it was even possible for something I didn't know about myself to affect the things that I do. And as she explained, it made more and more sense on how, for example, in a relationship, there can be problems, but you don't know where it is. And most people assume that that's just that's just how it is, but nobody takes the time to understand what that means. In a relationship, when there's a problem and you, you know there's a problem and you can't figure out what the problem is, it's pretty clear that that means there is something outside of your conscious control or mindset that is affecting your conscious actions and moods and behaviors. Another common example of this is when someone says that they're feeling off. I know that everybody's experienced some of their friends or even themselves when they wake up and they're just feeling off. And people think that is a normal part of behavior. And what's interesting about that is 
when people say that they're feeling off, they're admitting that there is, they're admitting implicitly at least, that there is something outside of their control, unconsciously if you will, that is affecting their conscious mood, behavior, actions, thoughts, whatever it may be. And I think it becomes pretty clear pretty rapidly that this phenomenon that there is not just a conscious aspect of reality, but there is also an unconscious aspect of reality is pretty easily acceptable. It's pretty clear that we as people don't behave in a transparent realm. We are not transparent to ourselves. That's the reason we have a psychology. That's a reason we have a sociology is to begin to dissect why we are the way we are and why we're acting the way we're acting, why we say certain things, why we do certain things and all of that. Given that, it is something that needs to be addressed. Now for this week, I just wanted to introduce the idea that there is two different structures of reality, a conscious aspect and an unconscious aspect. Next week, we'll dive a little bit deeper and throughout this next series of journal posts, we'll continue to address what really is the unconscious, um, how it affects you specifically, the different parts it has, the different subpersonalities it has, and all of that. But in this week, I just wanted to introduce that idea and get you thinking about how in your life there are unconscious aspects and there's things that you don't understand about yourself that affect what you do and how you feel. Tomorrow I will dive a little bit deeper and throughout this week I will start to apply it to different aspects of life to be able to show you how this concept really affects what you do in your life and the different aspects in your life. And by understanding this most fundamental concept you'll begin to see how little you actually know and how much there is going on behind the scenes in your life. But for now, let's get back to business. So for the rest of the day, there is two things that I'm gonna be working on. Number one, we have to design the banner that's going on the Skydeck windows. So the restaurants that we're opening, um, Zizeki Street Food, which is the first restaurant we're opening um, in about three weeks, we are designing a banner that basically displays that we're open and that we're doing a, a big marketing campaign where any new customer can get free food. So we're designing that today and we have to get that sent out so it can be printed in time. I'm also gonna be talking to the custom uh, smallwares company because those take about two weeks. So all of our to-go bags, to-go containers, we need to start that process today on ordering that. So that way we have them in time for our opening in three weeks. So this is going to be the second journal post, which is piggybacking off of yesterday's talk on the unconscious. Today, I wanted to expand a little bit more on the basic information. Like I said last time, I'm not trying to go too in depth this time. I'm not trying to discuss anything too complex. That's going to be saved for later videos. But this week, like I said, just introducing the basic idea and today just expanding a little bit more on that idea. Later this week, I'll also be applying it to particular aspects of life, like work and relationships. But for today, I just wanted to give another example, which is I think the best example of how the unconscious is manifested in life. So as everybody knows, and as I said last time, people are not transparent to themselves, right? So for example, when we set goals, if we were transparent to ourselves, we would set a goal, we would accomplish it, and we'd move on. We would set a goal to go to the gym, we would accomplish it, we'd move on. We have an ambition about work, we would set it, and we would move on. That's not how it usually happens. Usually we set a goal, like on New Year's Eve, we want to go to the gym so badly, we make this goal, and then we end up not going. And the question is why? The answer is because we're not transparent to ourselves. And what I mean by that is, when we set these goals and we have these ambitions, there is something outside of our conscious perception that is inhibiting us from completing those goals. And that is very common. I know everybody is familiar with that. Again, that is the reason we have a sociology. That is the reason we have a psychology. It is because we don't know all of who we are. We don't know all of what goes on behind the scenes that make us not transparent to ourselves, that make us unable to simply just set a goal and accomplish it very logistically. We have other aspects to ourselves that get in the way of that process. So that is, I think, the best example of how the unconscious affects our conscious behavior without going into too much detail. You just need to think about how, in your life, how you're not transparent to yourselves, how when you have certain ambitions like everybody, 
why those things aren't getting accomplished. We're going to be answering those questions, but for now, just start thinking about how in your life you have not been transparent to yourselves and how maybe you can start to realize that there is a strong unconscious factor to life. Tomorrow, we're going to be discussing more of the particular aspects and how it affects those particular aspects, like work, relationships, and health, and all of those things. But for now, I will leave you with that. That will complete the second kind of introduction to the basic idea of the unconscious. And with that, let's get back to business. So today we're going to be working on two major things. Number one, we're going to be getting our manager certifications or at least beginning that process of getting our food safety cards. Basically in the restaurant industry, everybody, every manager or owner has to carry a food handler's card and a manager card, which ensures that we know the proper safety protocols for the restaurants. Also, the hoods got delivered for both kitchens. The one for Jay is actually going up today. So later today, we're going to go check out the progress. So yesterday the hoods got delivered. That was the thing that was pushing back our opening about two or three weeks. So they finally got delivered and we actually installed both of them right now. Let's go check them out. So the hoods are here to basically ensure that all the smoke and steam from the cooking line are sucked up into the ventilation so they're not going out to the restaurant. So this is gonna be where our actual cooking line is, our stoves, fryers, all that kind of stuff. In Zaziki Street Food, the hood that got put in there, our GC is a fucking idiot, and he forgot to plan that we need to put an eight foot hood into this gap right here. I told him repeatedly that it was not going to fit, and yesterday they got delivered, and we actually had to cut a hole in this wall to get the hoods in. So now we, uh, so dumb. So this is going to be part three of the journal. So yesterday I talked a little bit about transparency and I used that as I think what is the best example of what shows how there is an unconscious aspect to reality. Today, I'm using two major aspects of life to just demonstrate how the unconscious is a major aspect of reality. Um, firstly, work. This one's pretty simple and it, it really ties into what we talked about yesterday about transparency and it's simple as this. Um, everybody wants to be successful, but when we set those goals and ambitions, they usually don't get accomplished and there's something outside of our control that's affecting what we consciously want. For relationships, I think it's very apparent how the unconscious affects that. Um, I know that in the past, almost every fight I've gotten into, it usually has nothing to do with the fight at all. And it really makes you wonder how the hell you could be fighting about something that you don't know consciously. And it really demonstrates how the unconscious plays a huge factor, especially in relationships, for determining your conscious experience in that aspect. Why does that happen and what is going on in those circumstances? Again, we're going to be talking about those things later, but for this short clip, I just wanted to use work and use relationships to manifest how the unconscious is a real reality that we have to deal with. Now let's get back to business. Today, we're just going to keep working on the food manager certification. It takes a while to get about 20 hours. Um, so we're going to keep working on that. And later today, we are going to go up to Skydeck and we're going to start getting organized for the wall tiles. Tomorrow we're going to actually start the job of tiling the walls, but today we're just getting set up, getting the walls clean, and getting the floors level so we can start that process. So this is going to be part four, the final part of my first journal topic on the basic structure of reality. Throughout this week I've been discussing how and introducing the idea that the unconscious is a major aspect of reality that we have to contend with. In this part, I'm just gonna summarize everything that we've talked about thus far. So first, we started off the week talking about how the claim when people say that they feel off is a perfect example of how there is an unconscious side of reality that we have to contend with. Everybody's woken up and felt like, you know, sometimes they just feel a little bit off and it begs the question, what is going on? Why do we feel off? And what is going on behind the scenes that would make us feel off in that moment? 
which is a great example of how the unconscious aspect of reality is a real aspect that we have to contend with. The day after that, we talked a little bit about how transparency to me is the best example of how the unconscious is a major aspect of reality. We talked about how the process of making goals and not hitting those goals and the reason we have psychology and the reason we have a sociology is because as people we are not transparent to ourselves and that is why we don't just simply set goals and have ambitions and get straight there. We are not perfect logistical creatures and there's things that affect our conscious motivations that are in the unconscious realm of reality. The day after that I used work relationships as an example of how the unconscious is a um, major aspect of reality. For work, I talked about how when we set those goals, we don't just get straight there. So it's a very good carry off into a practical example of how we're not transparent. For relationships, we talked a little bit about how in a relationship, almost all the times that people get into fights, it's because, because of reasons they don't really understand, which really makes you wonder how you could be fighting about something we don't really know what it's about in the first place. And that point further illustrates how the unconscious is a major aspect of reality. So for this part, it's just a basic overview of everything that we've been talking about. I'm now going to combine all the videos and actually make a written journal post where I have all the information together and post it on my website so it's all in one place. The reason I wanted to start with such a basic topic and just introduce the idea that there is an unconscious aspect of reality was because I think that sets the stage for all the other topics that we're gonna be talking about. I think it's very important that people, before they start trying to map out directions in their lives or before I start to talk about my beliefs on life, it is really important to understand that the unconscious side of reality is a side of reality that doesn't get talked about as much as conscious experience. There's plenty of people that talk about what you should do in your life, but there's not a lot of people who address how the unconscious gets in the way of what you're trying to do. And I think before talking about all of my beliefs on life and talking about the psychological concepts that can have a great impact on people's lives, you have to first understand who you are, how there is this large aspect of reality that is in most part behind the scenes and you have to learn more about those processes and how those get in the way of your conscious motivations. So in other words, I think it's most important to become transparent of yourself, to become aware of what's going on in the behind the scenes of your life before you start talking about beliefs and directions. I can give all of the psychological concepts that I believe in, but it's not gonna make a difference if there's things that's going on in your life behind the scenes in your life that are affecting where you want to go. So I first think that it's important to address that unconscious side of reality and to address all the things that have an impact on your life that you're not aware of. So now that we've set the stage and I've introduced the idea that there is an unconscious aspect of reality, we're gonna dive way deeper into the actual unconscious, what it's comprised of, all the different elements it has and how it specifically affects different aspects of your life. So with that said, let's get back to business. Today and tomorrow, we're gonna to be spending all of both days tiling the walls. The past couple of days, we've been getting set up, getting things organized, getting the walls leveled so that way we can start the tiling job. And now starting today and tomorrow, we're gonna to be beginning that process of tiling both of the kitchen walls.